In this video you will learn how to implement authentication inside Superbase and Angular. So just to remind if you don't know what is Superbase, this is a service which is similar to Firebase, which actually means you don't want to implement your backend, maybe you don't want to handle database, then you can simply take Superbase and use it instead of doing that. Additionally to that, you can implement authentication really easy with Superbase with lots of different providers. And this is exactly the goal of this video, to show you how to implement authentication with Superbase in Angular. And what we will use here is an official library Superbase.js that you can use with any JavaScript client. After creating an account inside Superbase, you will see such window. I don't have any projects, so let's create a project. The name can be testing Superbase, and you must provide a database password or click generate it here. After this, you can select a region, I am fine with Europe, and I'm clicking create new project. Our next step is to install this library to work with Superbase. This is why npm install Superbase Superbase.js. And additionally to this, as we are using Angular, we want to store an API keys from Superbase in an environment file. By default, it is not generated, but we can create it by using command npx p angular 17 ng generate environments. I'm hitting enter, and as you can see, there are two new files source environments environment.ts and development.ts. This is why now inside my editor, I can jump to source environments, open it here, as you can see, it is empty. And I want to create here superbase URL and also superbase key. Now inside our project we can scroll to the bottom and here we can copy our project URL and paste it here as well as API key. Now I want to copy paste this object and put it inside our development because we want to use the same credentials for production and for local database. Our next step is to configure providers for the project. And here on the left we have lots of stuff we are interested in authentication. So let's click on it and we are getting such page. We don't have any users in our project and here we can click add user. But before we do that I want to click on providers. And as you can see here is an email and it is enabled by default. This is exactly what we want to use in this video, but we have lots of other providers that you can enable and use in a matter of seconds. So let's open here email because we need some changes. Yes, enable email provider is fine. I don't want to confirm email because there is a limited amount of emails that you can send in the Superbase without your own email server. And let's hit here save. So we successfully configured Superbase. Now let's look on our project. I have just two links, login and register. On login we are providing email and password, and on register username, email and password. Also we have here a logout button, which is not implemented yet. And we want to start with creating a service, which will work with the Superbase. So inside source app I want to create new file, auth.service.ts. And it will be a service, so it's an injectable. And here we want to export our class, which is our our service. And inside our injectable, we need to write provided in root. So first of all, here we want to create a client of Superbase. And in order to do that, we are using a function create client, and we must provide inside first of all environment dot Superbase URL and also environment Superbase key. So this is the instance of Superbase that we want to use in our application. And the first function that we want to create here is register, where inside we want to provide our email, password and username. So here we are getting an email, which is a string, then our username, it also will be a string, and password is a string. And what we are getting back is an observable of auth response. And as you can see, it is coming from Superbase. Now here we are getting back a promise because any API request to Superbase will return for us a promise. So here we can call superbase.auth because we are working with the auth namespace and auth functionality dot sign up. As you can see, there are lots of different methods. We can use just general method sign up and provide inside credentials. First of all, it will be email and password. And here is a tricky part. We also want to provide a username, but we can't do that directly inside sign up. What we can do is provide username as an additional meta information. 
This is why here we have options and inside it will be data. And inside data you can provide whatever you need. For example, here I will provide a username. But we must remember that here we want to get back an observable because we are talking about Angular. We don't want to work with promises. This is why here I want to use from method to convert this promise to an observable. And as you can see, we successfully created our register function. Now let's use our, our service inside register. As you can see, this is just a form, an empty error message and don't submit function. So first of all, here we want to get our our service by injecting here inside our service. And inside our on submit, we want to read our raw form data by calling this form get raw value. After this, we can call our our service register that we just created and provide inside raw form email, then raw form username and raw form password. And by calling subscribe, we will get here a result. Most importantly, result will have inside two things. First of all, data, this is our successful response with the user and an error if we're getting an error, which actually means we're not using with superbase catch error. It won't throw anything. It will have just two properties, data and error. And here we're coming to an interesting point. We want some validation inside our application. This is where here we can check if we're getting an error back, then we want to save this error on the screen. And this is exactly why we have this error message and we are rendering it with if condition inside our template. So here we can simply assign inside our error message result.error.message. And if we don't get an error, then we want to redirect a user to the home page. So this router navigate by URL and here will be slash. The main point is that with Superbase, we don't need to store in local storage our token, manage it correctly, it will all be done by Superbase itself. So let's have a look in browser. I'm reloading the page and here I want to type a user foo and email foo at gmail.com and password 123. I'm hitting here sign up and as you can see on the top, we got our error message, password should be at least 6 characters. Here I can look in the network, as you can see there was an API call to Superbase. Here is our payload, as you can see it looks a little bit different, it's not just our form, but also additional fields from Superbase. And here is a preview, we are getting a message, password should be at least 6 characters. So we are getting an error and we are rendering it on the screen. Now let's update our password for example from 1 to 8. I'm hitting here sign up and as you can see I was redirected to the home page which means our user was created. Let's look in Superbase. Here I am clicking on users and as you can see there is a user foo at gmail.com with email provider. Here we can click view user info and we are getting all properties for this user. The most interesting part for us is this raw user metadata because inside we have a username. This is exactly what we wanted to save additionally and what we will read later. Now it is time to implement login. This is why let's jump inside our, our service and here after register let's create a login method. We must provide inside an email string and a password string. And back we are getting again an observable or false response from Superbase. What I want to get here again is a promise by calling this superbase auth dot sign in with password. And inside we must provide an object with email and password. And we want to convert our promise again to observable, so from promise. And our login method is created. Now we can actually copy paste the whole code from register because it will be super similar. First of all, injection of our service, I need to put it inside login and I also want to copy paste fully on submit because again it is the same. So inside our login function, we're injecting our service and here is our on submit. Instead of register, we're calling login, we're providing inside just an email and password. We're getting a result, it is the same, we're handling an error message and if we're logged in successfully, we're redirecting a user to the home page. Let's check if it's working. I'm jumping to login, I'm typing here foo at gmail.com and the password. I'm hitting here sign in and I was successfully redirected to the home page, which actually means I'm logged in. And now is the most interesting part, we must look inside application in the local storage. 
and as you can see there is a key of my user which was set here by superbase which actually means this is all the information with refresh token and user that we have inside and this is exactly how superbase will authenticate our user after page reload but again we should not do anything it is all working out of the box so now we want to implement getting of the user after page reload and I want to do that inside a component because this is our component that will be executed on any page. Here we have our engine in it, but we want to get access to our our service. So let's inject here our our service, and inside engine in it, I want to call this our service superbase because we have full access to it. Dot out dot on our state change, and inside we're getting two things. First of all, an event, and secondly, a session which actually means this is a callback which will happen every single time when something regarding our authentication was changed. And inside what I want to do, I want to console log first of all an event and then our session. And let's reload the page and check it out. As you can see in the console, we're getting first of all signed in and then initial session. And we got our user data, which actually means inside event, we have a string of specific event and we can handle it here correctly. For example, we can write here if our event equals signed in, then we want to log in the user. What we want to do, we want to save user information in our application. And in order to do that inside our, our service on the top, I want to create a signal. So here will be current user, which is a signal. And inside I will provide null. And here I want to set as a data type that inside will be either an object with email, which is a string, and username, which is a string, or null. So null will be there by default when we are not logged in, and this object when we are logged in. Now we can jump back inside our app component and set inside our sign in event this signal. So it will be this dot our service dot we're getting here our current user dot set and inside we're providing an object. It will be our email and we're reading it from session. And as you can see, it can be now so question mark here dot user dot email. And additionally, we're reading here username from meta information. So it will be again session. It can be undefined dot user dot identities. And the identities is an array. And again, it can be null. So we're reading with at zero, the first element. Again, it can be null dot identity data. Again, it can be null. And here we're reading a field username. And as you can see, I used here username in square brackets because it is not typed inside identity data. Additionally to that, as you can see, our email can be undefined because we put here question mark. It is not really possible because this is assigned in and we for sure get information here. This is why I want to put an exclamation mark to fix this problem. And additionally, as you can see here after question mark, I missed dot. So this is our signed in and we are setting our user. But there is also another case. I want to also handle logout. So here, if our event is signed out, we want to set our this, our service current user, back to null. So we successfully covered these two cases. Our information is updated, but it makes sense to render some logic here inside our markup. So first of all, I want to render these two links only when we are not locked in. So here will be an if for our service dot current user with round brackets. And when it equals null, it means that we are not locked in. So we are putting this block inside. Now here we can put one more if condition and check that we are getting current user. And then we are rendering logout. And additionally, I want to render here a username. So it will be our, our service dot current user. Again, it can be null, so question mark dot username. Let's save this and check if it's working. I'm reloading the page and we're getting here full and logout. Why it happens? Because I'm logged in. But actually we didn't implement our logout method. And it is really easy to do. This is why let's jump inside our, our service. And here after login, we can implement logout method. We don't need to provide anything inside. It returns void and we're simply calling here superbase out dot sign out. Now we can use this logout inside our app component. Here is our logout function. So let's use here our service dot logout. 
Let's reload the page, click logout, and as you can see directly we are seeing links login and register, and after page reload we are still logged out. Now I am clicking login, I am providing our credentials, I am hitting enter, and we are here on the home page with full and logout, which actually means we successfully implemented Superbase authentication. But as I already mentioned, Superbase is really similar to the Firebase, and if you are interested how we can implement authentication with the same project in the Firebase, make sure to check this video also.